How you guys doing? Hi, Javi and Tim and Derek. Uh, thanks for coming this morning. Well, we got a lot to talk about. Um, so let's get going here. I think um, I've run into an interesting issue with our project watch, with the one with um, using the uh, ETA 2892 A2. And that's this the uh, the uh, thingamajig I got the um, uh, case uh, came with this what they call a bezel, and the dial goes on top of the bezel, and the whole thing fits into the watch. And so I've been taking it very slowly because I've got to down in here. I've got to be sure that the uh, stem goes through and so forth. So anyway, that's. Um, that was a new thing. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? Um, so today, what I wanted to do, I wanted to, first of all, tell you about the plan to have a, a subscription. Oh, by the way, is this, I, I forgot to put in my uh, thingamajig here, so <laughs> sorry about that. Hang on a second. I can do de- nah, I better not. That's why I, every time I do that, something messes up. Um, is the sound in the video okay? Uh, that's always important to check. Usually, um, I try to have my, I've been trying to have my uh, my lapel uh, microphone on, but uh, today I, I didn't get to it. So, okay, good. Thanks, Raj. Um, oh, good, good, good. All right, great. That's good to hear. Um, so let's, let me tell you where we are. Uh, as promised, I had contacted, um, Marco Lang, and uh, he's he's such a he's such a great guy. Hi, Junior, and so he I uh, he said, what about you know maybe uh, if I got together with uh, uh, Stefan Kadoki and um, Richard Hobbring, maybe we could do it. So I sent him this picture of <laughs> my terrible rendering of what we had in mind was with a key wound um, movement with these uh, finger bridges on each one of the, uh, on the, on the uh, wheel train. Okay. So this was, you know, this was, uh, uh, you know, this will make it easy. <laughs> well, apparently it's not easy at all. Uh, you know, I said, you know, we, what, one of the reasons we're going to be able to go forward later on with Agenhor is because we're using certain things that already exist in a base uh, that they have, okay? And then on top of that, they'll put the um, uh, the kind of thing for the retrograde minutes and the jumping hour. So this is going to be a cool watch we're making. So anyway, um, and and I think that we were told, well, you know, we could do it with a uh, an ETA, we could do it with a busher, or we could do it with one of our own. And naturally, if we want to get a, a really you know, by one of the greats, um, we'd want the one for them. It was a little more expensive. And so I thought, well, you know, <laughs> apparently this 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 project was a whole different kettle of fish. And I said, that's not easy to do. What do I know? Um, I just think these guys are so bright they could do anything. So we, we've got to be careful about that. Anyway. Hi, Abdul and Krajmir. How you guys doing? Uh, Tim? Ooh, I like your palm tree, Tim. Hey, Junior. Let's see. Everybody doing good? Hi, William Rizzo. Hope you're feeling great. Jay, how are you? Andrew, good to see you. NS something. How's Canada? Uh, and Thomas. Hello again. Okay. So, anyway, so I, so I got this really nice... A uh, letter back from Marco. He said, basically, he said, you want a, a bespoke movement for, and, you know, for, I don't know how many guys we could probably get, you know, between 20 and 50, somewhere like that. He said, no one can afford to do that. And I thought, hmm, well, that's the way it goes. But he's really nice about it, really cool guy. So I said, okay, uh, we, we'll go to plan B, whatever that is. Hi, Indrajit. 
So what happened was I thought, well, you know, let's do it the other way around. Let's start with a um, a wind-up movement that we can find somewhere and then put that into a watch. Well, uh, this, I mean, th this is something we know of has been an option all along. And so what I found, here's a watch I found. It's a wind-up pocket watch. And uh, there's the key. Now, the top, what happened, this used to have a fold-over case. And um, that got ripped off, and it's gone. And so somebody, I guess, this guy, they put this plastic um, uh, glass over it. Okay, we'll call it a glass. And it works. And so I thought, well, you know, okay, let's take a look at that. Maybe this is, we could, this is probably, I'll see how affordable this is. And so this is what the movement looks like. And I thought, my God, that looks almost exactly like what we had talked about with this. Okay, so here it is in person in a way. Here you have the, uh, the finger bridges. And this one is sort of look like a, a, a sickle bridge. Uh, and then you, here's your um, balance cock. And you have a, you know, a little uh, a regulator there. And then here's your winding. This is, this is where you wind it with a key. And it comes through one of these holes. And then this is where you set it. And it comes through this other hole. And so I thought, you know, well, I'll get one of these. And, and we, we can try it out. And see if I can make a, um, a wind-up watch out of it. And, and basically, this is what I'm going to try to do. Um, this, these screws here hold it into the case. So let's take it out of the case. And then I've got a bunch of, who knows how many I have. Um, Uh, I don't know where I put them all. I get, I've got, oh, here we go. Here's one. Um, I've got these great big cases that I that I got at one time or another and didn't use for one reason or the other. And this is the idea. Could be wrong, but I can try it. So this is the one that comes off on the back, okay? And these are see-through, so this makes it even better. Uh, so I, we unscrew this using our sticky ball, also known as a uh, friction ball. Okay, so that comes out. And so what we do, we put the movement in here, wind the thing up, and then put the backpack on. Now, whether this will fit or not, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, but I thought, eh, you know, we can try it. Now, the whole thing is where do you find wind up um where do you find where do you find uh key wound uh pocket watches well uh what i thought of immediately was ebay so i went to ebay and they got lots of them there uh but they were they were like i think in the thousands some of them multi thousands i thought hmm so I looked some more, and I found this place called Etsy, E-T-S-Y. I think that's how you spell it. <coughs> and this one was 145 bucks. Now, they said it was in working order, so let's hope it is. And, and so they said, well, it's in somebody's, um, what they call it, though, in their basket already, in their, shopping, in their shopping cart. Somebody's already put it in their shopping cart. But they didn't say couldn't have it, <laughs> and so I put it in my shopping cart, paid for it. Then, then I went back and looked again, <laughs> no longer available, sold. So I guess some people go there, they put them in their shopping cart, and they all think about it. Uh, if well, you know, some, sometimes I guess they think it sort of reserves it, but it doesn't. Okay, hi, Andy Candy and Andrew, how you guys doing? Good seeing you here. So that was uh, sort of, hi, Jean-Claude. Um, so, so that's the plan. Okay, so let's, let's hear what you guys think about it as, as far as the plan goes. Because like, getting a bespoke um, movement with all of, the, all of the things that, you know, brand new, 
uh, key wound and so forth doesn't seem to be in the works right now. And then uh, later, uh, you know, sort of when we sort of get a break from COVID, we can go back and finish up our other project. So what do you think? Uh, I have around 20 vintage smaller movements here. My plan is to fix them in a couple of cases, use a couple to try to make um, cufflinks out of smaller movements. <laughs> there used to be a cartoon called Non Sequitur, Abdul. <laughs> That's an, um, a non sequitur. Okay, I think it's a great idea. Okay, let's see. To reuse the movement from the old movement, but it'll uh, have to have a side watch as most of the pocket watches have their crown at 12 o'clock. Yeah. Um, tell me more about that, Abdul. This is this is what I got. Let me get this out of here. And this is what I got, and the um, the this part right here is that looks like it's at three o'clock, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> that's just uh, something to hold on to it. I don't think it does anything. It doesn't wind a watch because it's a key wound watch. That, believe me, is is really nice working without a uh, having to you know cut a stem and do all of that other kind of stuff. Um, Okay, no. <laughs> All right. Um, so, okay. All right. Let's let's go. No more about the cough, the cufflinks, which I think is a cool idea. I don't need a cufflink <laughs> at all. What do you got for me? Anything? Any other ideas? Have any of you guys ever worked? Do any of you own a um, a key wound pocket watch? I'm not really into vintage watches, and so I don't know anything about them. The one I bought um, is from the 1800s. It's a 19th century one, and they said something about uh, Victorian. Um, but here, let me see, where is it? Uh, huge. In, uh, I guess it's on one of the other pictures. I thought it was something that had huge in on it, so it was pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to be able to find a hunter case, a uh, hunter back case. Yes, it would be. Hi, Tony. I never had one, but it would be cool. Okay, well, listen, um, you know, this is something that... Um, Nobody has to jump on. Uh, once I get it, uh, you know, I, we, we can play around with it and I'll see whether I just, you know, blew, you know, 145 bucks or not. But it's, a, you know, it's something that is, you know, I we're waiting for this stupid thing to get over. Um, and by the stupid thing, I mean the pandemic. Um, I, you know, it's, just, it's a project. Um, things are looking up, though. Indigent. Hey, Bill, just suggesting getting low price movements from Kadoki or, uh, or Harboring and getting its dial decorated by Wooten Lonnen, uh, the way Halter did uh, for Louis Erod. Yeah, um, Indigent, um, you know, that's an idea. We could try that. You know, the other thing is, is that one of the very, very best uh, hand wound movements is already available and uh, the one that Marco Lang did before he left um, Lang and Hine and that's the uh, UWD I think it's called the 31.1 we were we were looking into getting that at one time uh, but we wanted to get the 31.2 well the 31.2 never materialized and I have my doubts that it ever will uh, there's certain advantages about having small seconds. You, your watch can be a little thinner because then you don't have to uh, stack the seconds on top. Uh, this one is my seven-day um, H. Moser Company Endeavor Center seconds. And it's a little thicker, okay, because you've got to have that. And plus it's seven days, so that I don't know if. That takes, yeah, it takes a bigger barrel, I guess. 
I think if we want to get such a bespoke movement with all these specifications, an Asian manufacturer would be the best bet to get everything that we uh, want. I think there are some good independents as well. Yeah, I, the thing is, though, is that I, I think it involves, well, there's another guy we got working on something, too. Um, one of our members said, hey, I think I can make one for you. <laughs> okay. And I think it was, hang on a second. I, I don't have his name right here. Um, he has two different names. And the one that he gave me, I wrote down somewhere. I forgot what it was. But this guy, you know, he's, he spends a lot of time on high horology lounge. And um, very, very sharp guy. Really knows his stuff. So that's another option if, you're, if we're talking about a bespoke um, hand wound big uh what you might call this a, a big uh a balance on it we all independently source a vintage key wound watch is marco and friends going to want to work with multiple different they don't want to work I, mean, <laughs> I gotta put it to you this way andrew they just they can't afford to they, they really can't afford to do everything they have to and then take care of our you know hobbyists i I, there's, there's what we're what we're talking about here is sort of like well uh, let's see if we really want one of these uh, we're not going to get a bespoke one forget about the bespoke one now maybe you're right about Abdul was talking about maybe one of the um, the Asian uh, watchmakers and there are like tons of great ones um, but I think that you know we've got I think we ought to go first with trying to do something with a watch like this because it's i mean this thing almost looks like the one we had the drawing of uh, except that it had it seems to have both the a free sprung and a uh, curb regulator on it so we'll just have to see how that goes yeah benjamin uh benjamin i i've um benjamin's been very busy <laughs> okay uh, Abdul, and um, he's got a whole line of his own watches. Uh, some time ago, he had a he got a bunch of uh, Vacher watches, uh, Vacher movements, and I was able to to buy one from him on that. And that's another project I have in mind. So, I mean, there's um, there are a lot of options, but I don't know. I don't think Benjamin does like bespoke movements at all. Uh, he may know somebody who can do it for something affordable, but I think in the meantime, um, we can hold that as, um, uh, let's say, another option. This is the, the thing about this is that the bespoke part is great. Now, we, we're, I think we can go ahead with the bespoke watch movement with Agonor, which to me is the, you know, is pretty much the pinnacle. Uh, this other one was sort of to try out something. And maybe too, we can work out a subscription plan uh, with Agonor. I don't know, you know, this is something we got to look into. Uh, it was getting pretty complicated though at some point and uh, they were busy with all, you know, the small company and they were very busy with, companies who actually <laughs> pay them <laughs> for what they're worth and so you know i think i think holding it for a while and look at that hi nephron indeed you are and there's you know <laughs> okay um so those are some ideas uh there are a number of vintage uh watch groups and pocket watch groups and it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to contact them uh, and say, hey guys, you know, what do you know about um, uh, these, uh, you know, key wound watches? Also, too, there there's some guys on the uh, pretentious watchmakers. <laughs> One of my proudly uh, made groups. Hey, crappy, how you doing, man? Uh, so, you know, there, there, there. I think there are a lot of sources for us. Is, is that the, the main thing to me was to be able to do it in a way that we would have something that was 
a lot less expensive than you know something we you know walk into a you know pick up in a store or something, but have a quality and a, a uniqueness that was beyond what we would typically get. By the way, too, let me. Uh, anyway, uh, any other ideas on that? Your thinking. Good grief. Mm -mm -mm. All of my good uh, chakra. <laughs> okay, look. Um, <laughs> uh, um, what are some of the, um, yeah, I, I know Benjamin is one guy, and, uh, certainly a cool guy. Um, hey, Derek, someone like uh, Le, Com Comte, uh, Le Comte on France might be able to execute an idea like this. Okay. Who is Le Comte? Morning. Hello, Alex. <laughs> Um, okay, well, this, these are things that I, I think would be worth uh, looking into. The other thing is, is that, you know, I, the other part of it is, is to learn something about watches. And, and I think by, you know, taking something like this, which is, has to me the beautiful simplicity of a watch, Albeit two, from two centuries ago, you know we can we can really learn something about these things. Oh, okay. Now the other thing I wanted to bring up uh, before I get a scram here. What about silicon in hair springs? Okay. Now the reason I bring this up, more and more watch companies are using silicon hair springs. Uh, for example, uh, one of the biggest the most important high-level uh, watchmakers that has been, begun using uh, silicon is um, Patek Philippe. Now, in a not too, in, well, I think maybe it was a recent, maybe it was just last year. There was an interview that Tom uh, Tim Miso, Moso, Miso Moso Tom did Tim did. <laughs> Tim Bose, I got to get the guy's name right. Uh, he's a guy who I'm afraid to listen to because he's so good at what he does, he can <laughs> run out and buy everything he suggests. But he had an interview with Philippe Dufour, and he asked him about that. And Philippe Dufour said, no, nah, he wouldn't use that. And, and it was interesting in this respect, and it also relates to what we're doing with if we go try, try this with a uh, – a vintage watch. He said that Tim Moso, yeah, there you go. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Andy. Uh, the what he was saying, he's saying if you look at all of the great watchmakers today, modern ones, they've all spent time in restoration. Okay. Uh, Michel Parmigiani uh, was picked out of a restoration group because he was so good. And then uh, uh, Kari Wootenlanen was doing restoration for Parmigiani, part of the Sandoz Family Foundation, uh, before he started his. And so uh, F.P. Jorn worked for his uncle in Paris for a number of years as a restore. So did uh, 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 Philippe Dufour. Okay, so all of these guys work in restoration. Now, one of the things that Philippe Dufour said, he said, you look at these watches, they're a couple hundred years old, and they still work. And he said, that's really amazing. He said, you start putting junk in, in watches, <coughs> and, you know, they they may not work just right. Um, so this is this is something, I think, that is, is an interesting observation. When... When I talk about making advances in watchmaking, um, I think most people have accepted CAD for 
uh, even to me before, has uh, accepted CAD and, and sort of the design and so forth. I, and but, but see, CAD doesn't do anything except aid in what used to be harder to do. Okay, it's sort of like uh, writing. I written a bunch of books, and I think the first eight of them I did, I used a typewriter. Okay, <laughs> boy, what, what, once a word processor came along, man, that made all the difference in the world. And, and I think there's a difference between using something like a CAD uh, in developing the design of a watch, and I, I don't know any watchmaker who doesn't use that. There may be some. But um, that's one thing. The other thing is, oh, so let's start using these more, I don't want to call them elements are not modern. <laughs> They've been here forever. But rather using them in a way sort of that was may have been borrowed to some extent from high tech. And so, but that's like saying, well, you know, the courts does a better job. Why don't we just stick with it? You know, and that's, I don't think that's the point of uh, of watch collection. Okay, the only issue with some of these old movements was the lack of uh, shock protection. So these old watches still work as long as you keep them safe in your drawer. Oh, and it's something, you're such a pessimist. <laughs> Either that or, you know, just be careful with them. You know, I, I suppose maybe you could add a shock absorber of some sort. If something, so Alex, this is from Alex. If something survived the test of time, that is good. Same with friendship. Murphy's Law says that if something works, don't change it. Mm. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with improvement. But I think that what we have to understand is that improvement in the way that, let's say, adding um, a rim and toy in Galate is an improvement in that you get better constant force whereas adding something like a plastic uh, uh, bridge or or plate which is which are really very good because they're anti non-magnetic uh, is, has other implications planetary force mm. hey Tanzil who needs CAD uh, Gerald Jim to use the fountain pen and a napkin for the royal oak yeah, that was sort of the uh, the initial design there, Tanzil. <laughs> yeah, there was a <coughs> uh, there was a guy uh, who developed the P thirty eight Lightning in World War Two, and he did the same thing. He he did the drawing on a napkin. You know, one of the more interesting ones was um, Van Cleef's and Arpels, Monsieur of uh, Arpel which was a men's watch. And the initial drawing that our uh, Pierre Arpels did, he just sketched it out, I think like with a fountain pen and put it together. That looks almost exactly like the thing that came out, but then you need the, you, you know, your watches are not one dimensional. You can do the design, but then everything else has to go together and that's where the CAD comes in. Hey, Shaver Ray, how you doing? Thank you. Um, Daniel's had no CAD. Oh, I know. No, neither did Brigade, <laughs> for that matter. Um, <coughs> you know, I don't know whether um, uh, Roger Smith uses it or not. Uh, Federico from Federico Loves Watches was talking nicely about you the other day in his channel. Um, uh oh. <laughs> he must owe me money. <laughs> no, I like Fed. You know, Fed's a guy, Fed, it would be very hard to be a guy like Fed because he loves watches, but he's selling watches. I mean, that'd be like selling your children. So I think it's it'd be a rough thing to do, but Fed's a good guy. Um, Jard Perigo, caliber 27, uh, was considered shock resistant enough to be used in official military watches. Oh, that's interesting, Andrew. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Maybe we can find some things or find some alternatives uh, for that because, you know, Abdul's point is, is is a valid one about shock absorption. Not all old movements are fragile. Yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> Listen, guys, um, 
uh, Clyde's not here today to tell me that my time is up, but my time is up. But anyway, I'd like you to, you know, to think about some of these. Things. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, uh, Bruce. <laughs> um, but I want to thank you all for coming. Just think about it. Come up with some ideas. And like I said, I, I am not really into um, antique watches, but I, I want to know enough about them so I can make see if we can go ahead with this project. Take care, be safe, and uh, by the way, too, if you got some more things, we'll be back at the four o'clock uh, New York time too. Bye bye.